Hi, it's Wendy, and welcome to the Crafters Video Collaboration's Christmas Video Hop. In each video, we will be sharing themed projects to get you inspired for your holiday crafting. Some of the videos will offer a giveaway, so be sure to leave a comment for your chance to win. In the description box below, you will find a link to the next person in the hop, as well as a link to the TaylorMadeCardsForYou.com blog where you'll find the full list of video links. The hop will be active through Saturday, December 7th. Winners will be announced on December 10th on each individual channel, and a list of all the winners will be posted on the TaylorMadeCardsForYou.com blog. The holidays for me is all about food. I enjoy holiday baking, and I decided to make a recipe stand so that my favorite recipes are within easy reach. This design is my own creation, and I'll include a free set of the written instructions in the description box below. I'll be featuring the recipe cards and gift tags from Taylor Made Cards For You's Holiday Baked Goods Kit in today's project. To make this project, you'll need a 5.5 by 9.5 piece of chipboard or thick cardstock, or cardboard, a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, a bone folder, some book binding glue, a foam brush, and a grid ruler. Now the first step is to trim the cardboard and I recommend using a guillotine trimmer or a ruler and a craft knife for this. And your first cut is going to be horizontally in the trimmer at six inches. You slide down to two and a half. And the last cut will be at one and a quarter. And I'll use a smaller trimmer for this for accuracy. Next, I'm gonna cut the 12 by 12 sheet. And the first cut will be at 11 and 3 quarters. And I'll rotate the paper and cut again at seven inches. Now I'm gonna grab that first piece, the five by 11 and 3 quarter, and I'm gonna trim horizontally at nine and five eighths inches. Now don't worry about these numbers. You'll be able to print them in the instructions. And be sure to check the description box. Now I'm ready to start book binding. And I'm just kind of laying out my pieces to see how they're gonna fit on that piece. And if you're interested in book binding, Club Scrap has some fabulous book binding videos. And if you look in the upper right corner of this video, there'll be a link there in case you're interested and wanna watch. Now I'm gonna start with the larger piece, the seven by 11 and three quarter inch piece. And I'm gonna draw some guidelines <clears throat> with a grid ruler so that my pieces will be lined up evenly. And I'm drawing that line on all four sides so I'll be able to line these pieces up just right. Now I'm gonna glue on the two three and a half by five inch pieces of, car of cardboard onto the cardstock panel. And I'm using Club Scraps of book binding glue and a foam brush. And I'm just gonna spread that thinly across the whole piece of cardboard. And it's gonna, it's gonna look really smooth on the cardstock with no bubbles and bumps. And this is the part where the guidelines come in handy. So I don't have to measure anything, I just stick them on. Okay, now I'm gonna center the two one and a quarter inch pieces in the space between the two larger pieces. And I'm gonna use the grid ruler to, um, to space those between each piece and adjust. Now I'm just gonna smooth everything and make sure I've got good contact with the paper and the cardboard. And I'll use my bone folder to make sure I don't have any air bubbles. And next I'm gonna mark the corners using the side of the grid ruler. And this was actually a tip um, from one of the Club Scrap videos. The grid ruler is an eighth of an inch thick and I'm gonna want an eighth of an inch lip so that you'll see in just a few minutes. Um, when I wrap the when I wrap the card 
the, around the cardboard. I'm gonna need that in just a minute and you'll see why. Now I'm just gonna use the bone folder to kind of train the paper. I'm kind of pre-folding everything so that when I add glue, everything will lay down flat. And the bone folder it helps so that you don't get oils from your fingers on your paper. Now I'm going to start um, gluing each end. And I'm just going to spread that glue with my foam brush. And then I'm just gonna press everything with my bone folder to make sure everything's nice and flat and I don't have any glue seeping out. Now, here's the part uh, this part is the reason for the extra paper in the corner. I'm wrapping the corners like you wrap a present. This ensures that the cardboard underneath won't be exposed on the corners. And it makes you look like you're professional. And I'll repeat that on the other side as well. And I'm just gonna press everything with my bone folder just to make everything a nice tight seal. And I'm running the bone folder across the edges of the um, cardboard so that um, it kind of flattens everything. And now I'm gonna uh, fold all my pieces into, um, mold it into the form that I want before I add that, that finishing strip of cardstock. And I'm doing that before the glue dries so that things can move around easily. And this is the final piece. And I've decided that I wanted the print side up. It's not really going to matter because it's on the inside of the stand. But I, I just decided that was the direction I wanted to go. And I'm just making sure that I'm brushing on a thin layer of glue across that whole piece of cardstock. And I'm just gonna make sure everything's nice and flat. I'm gonna rub it with the bone folder again. And then before that glue dries, I'm gonna fold it into my form again. Now my next step is to um, punch some holes so that I could add some D-rings. And the D-rings are gonna perform two functions. One is to hold everything together, and the other is gonna be to hold all my recipe cards onto the stand. Now this little piece of cardstock will be my, um, my template for the rest of the, the recipe cards that I'm gonna add later. Now, if you find that your your after your book dries that the top doesn't hold together, you can always add a little strip of uh, hot glue or something to hold that together right there. Now I'm ready to work on my recipe cards, and I'm using the recipe cards that were in the holiday baking kit, the digital kit, and I'm using Photoshop Elements to resize everything. Um, these recipe cards were a little bit too big, and I need a three by five inch size. So I'm going to resize these to fit on in my little book or in my recipe stand. So I've selected out one of the images and I created a three by five inch document 
and I'm just resizing the recipe card to fit in there. And once that's done, I'm going to create an eight and a half by 11 inch um, uh, document so that I can print on, I can use my home printer to print these. And I'm gonna slide that little recipe, the resized recipe card there, and I'm gonna copy that a few times and fill up that document. And I think I got five, five to a page. And I'll print those and I'll trim them out. Now I'm just going to add some finishing touches to these. I'm going to add some uh, vintage photo distress ink to the edges just for um, if you've watched my videos before I usually like to do this to, uh, to pieces of my project. Adds a nice finishing touch, adds a little vintage look, um, hides imperfections. And now I'm going to use my template and punch holes in my recipe cards so that I can put everything together. And here's a picture of my finished project. I added a cover and decorated by trimming the little baker from one of the holiday baking tags. And the title was stamped with one of my favorite font stamp sets from Concord and Ninth, the Sophisticated Script Set. I also printed and decorated the gift tags from the holiday baking kit and they are ready to add to my baked gifts to give away. And I also created some colored dividers and stamped some headings to categorize my recipes for quick access. Don't forget to check out the description box below to grab your set of instructions and click the link to the hop, uh, link, I'm sorry, click the link to hop to the next video. Comments are always welcome and if you like what you've seen give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks so much for joining me.